if you have something that could help people, even the possibility that it helps people who are suffering in some way, and you go like, I don't know if it's a smart business decision to go help these people. I mean, that's a dick move, right? That's Wayne Mackey, CEO and founder of StateSpace, the developer behind AimLab, a tool that was designed to help gamers and pros get better at the games they love. But over time, AimLab has found another use, bringing gaming to hospitals to help brain development for recovering patients while at the same time promoting inclusion and diversity within competitive gaming. A lifelong gamer, but I barely graduated high school. <laughs> College wasn't in the cards, had a, an awesome 1.8 GPA, hated math and science. All I wanted to do was play games. Really ever since I played Wolfenstein 3D, I think was, the, was, was one of the first games that really changed my life. Uh, that and then Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it was like light bulbs kind of went off and, and I said, you know, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. I had no idea how to do it or what that kind of path looked like, but I knew early on that was, that was really what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until much later in life, I think that, you know, I realized there were some cool things you could do with math and science. And it completely kind of unlocked a new world for me and, and changed my worldview. You know, discovering the brain as like, really the ultimate computer or the ultimate information processing system, but like this weird alien computer that we, you know, was dropped off on Earth and we were trying to like reverse engineer and figure out. That was fascinating to me. To study the brain, Wayne went to NYU and AIM Lab was born during his time there. You know, quote unquote, esports were really taking off, I think, at the time and taking off in the sense of where I would see, you know, people come and give talks at like MIT Sloan Analytics Conference, which was typically for traditional sports or Steve Aronset from Team Liquid giving an interview in like ESPN. Um, which was really cool. And, and what I noticed, what was really interesting to me was the questions and problems that folks were starting to try and solve were like, what are the fundamental components of skill in gaming? What's the analog in gaming to running fast, being strong, jumping really high, skills that in traditional sports would help you, whether it was basketball or football, if you can run fast, that's probably a good thing. And so Wayne made AimLab a training program to help solve for some of the problems within gaming and esports from being able to apply metrics to scouting, to measuring individual players' progress. These are aspects that traditional sports have employed for decades, yet nobody thought to bring the same philosophies to gaming. AimLab has now become one of the best ways to find great esports players, specifically within high skill cap games like Counter-Strike, Valorant, and Apex. But AimLab has found more use for their product than just to train esports pros. It's also found a home in healthcare. This is David Petrino. He's a neuroscientist and the director of rehabilitation innovation at Mount Sinai in New York, which means he works to find accessible solutions for those who need rehabilitation and healthcare. My background is in physical therapy, and I spent a lot of time working on rehabilitating people with neurological injury. I went off and did a PhD in neuroscience. The focus of my PhD was understanding the, you know, the basic elements of motor control, how the brain controls movement. When David met Wayne at an esports conference, a question came up. Could AIM Lab be used to track and possibly improve cognitive function? I think we felt a moral compulsion to, if we have something that can ease the suffering of people in any way, it is completely worth the attempt to see if we can do that. As we've continued to get to know one another and state space in general have become a little bit more interested in the healthcare space, now we've also started to think about how we could work together to help individuals who are recovering from neurological injury. I think that for us, the most exciting opportunities really are in gaming and then in what we can do to improve kind of health outcomes for people also using games. So for instance, you know, we've done stuff with folks who have suffered a stroke, helping them rehabilitate. We're running trials right now with Mount Sinai and their pediatric cerebral palsy unit. So to use basically a variant of AIM Lab to help kids regain motor control and motor function. David says that the key to healing brain injury, as is the case with all rehabilitation, is the act of repetition. The ability to rehab is oftentimes limited to the access available for the exercises, but David and Wayne had solved that. By using a computer game as the exercise, people could access it remotely whenever they felt the drive to. 
Enter the Quad Gods, a competitive gaming team in which everyone is paraplegic. David has been working with each of these players as individuals and as a team for years. He is affectionately called the Quad Father. I first started focusing on the idea of the Quad Gods when an amazing neuropsychologist by the name of Angela Riccobono reached out to me. Angela is this angel that works on the ward with us. And she reached out to me about one such individual, Chris Scott, who was a very high level spinal cord injured patient. Uh, he was a C3 injury, which means that he couldn't move his arms or his legs. He could only move his head. And Angela said, look, you need to help this guy. He's an amazing athlete. He was a skydiver uh, before his injury. He had completed, you know, more than 900 jumps. And following his injury, you know, he was just really struggling to transition this new life and this new reality for himself where he had gone from being so free to not being able to move anything but his head. And so we met and honestly, I, you know, I was at a loss. I, I was just like, tell me what you like to do. Tell me what, you know, what are you into? What are your hobbies? And he was telling me about all sorts of things that were not relevant at all. You know, I was like, oh God, what am I, you know, I was freaking out. And then he mentioned gaming and I was like, well, hold up, how do you game? And he sort of like indicated to his backpack and I reached, rustled through there and he had this device called a quad stick. I reached back out to Angela and I told her what we were gonna do. She was in full support and she reached out to a bunch of quadriplegics in her network. And it's been really wonderful to see these guys come together as a team. It wasn't until Chris, who God rest his soul, passed away, who we call the captain of the team. He was in Mount Sinai as an inpatient and he was getting depressed because he couldn't find a way to like really stay motivated with anything. The only thing that he really loved was gaming. Blake Hunt is one member of the Quad Gods and has been playing video games his entire life. In 2007 though, during a high school football scrimmage, he broke his neck. That didn't stop him. For Chris, he was depressed so uh, David hooked him up to one of the games that they had in there and he kicked David's ass. So David was like, oh, cool. So he asked him like, what were some of his dreams and things like that, what would he like to do? Um, and he told him like he always had dreams of starting a team. So David was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. I, you know, trying to see what he could do. Nyree Stevens is another member of the Quad Gods. Due to her injury, she plays games with a mouth stick. Um, I was pretty excited because, you know, I never thought that I'd be able to play a video game. So for me to actually play and win, it was like an amazing feeling. And when I went to Mount Sinai, and I seen a lady named Angela. She had asked me one day, like, oh, you're like one of the only female quads. And we have a group that's gonna be playing video games and I would like to add you to it. So at first, you know, I was a little shy because it's only boys, but then, you know, I joined me. We want to bring to light that although we are disabled, there are plenty of the other disabled people out there that can game just as competitively or if not better than other people. Um, a lot of people are really looking forward to something. Now people who for a long time, they just sat at home depressed. Now they have something they can inspire to. Be. And that's our main goal to help get notoriety for the disabled community outside of the everyday, us working out, things like that. Cause you can draw inspiration from anywhere. Aim Lab is dope because the one thing, you, you know, the one thing I'll say about all the call of gods, when we use Aim Lab, some of our reaction time is slow, but the one thing is we're very accurate. So by playing games, can we measure things that you wouldn't be able to pick up in that game in a much easier and kind of standardized way? So if you can do that, that then lends itself to many, many more opportunities that you can apply that to. So you can imagine for, for folks that have a disability, it's not always easy for them to get into maybe the doctor's office or the therapist's office or anything like that. And if through the technology at home, someone who maybe suffered a stroke can not only try to rehab at home, but two, that information can be sent to their doctor kind of in real time and their clinician can, can track the progress of things. Maybe I can go, I've suffered a stroke and I have an issue with, with movement. You know, maybe I can say, okay, I can close my hand or I can't. And that's kind of a binary thing. But if we can say, listen, Compared to yesterday, you have two millimeters more of motion that you could do. We can use that as positive encouragement for people to continue their rehabilitation and have that rather than just like, I can't do it, I still can't do it, it's five days later. They maybe won't notice the small gains that they have that they can use as encouragement to get better.